What's up and welcome to the one, two, three, four. Is this the seventh brunchies? I don't know, man. Because I don't know how much we ever <laughs> count the first iteration of the brunch breakdown. So I have no idea. Yeah. How many brunchies have there been? Man. At least four. Yeah. But you're right, Chris. That first iteration of the the podcast. I don't know how many times we yeah did it then because we somehow managed to do 35 episodes in like two years so <laughs> but they were like i i'm pretty positive any brunchy awards that we did in that first iteration were like four hour podcasts that's <laughs> true that's that's very fair all right that's well true. anyways Welcome to the Brunchies, our end of year awards special where we talk everything that went on in pop culture, in our lives, in music, in everything possible. We're talking all about it today on the show. And hopefully you guys have some, you know, fun while you're getting ready to, you know, do do your thing on these uh, days of, I don't know who works, who doesn't work. I, I'm so confused, but I don't want to get way too off on this. Holidays are weird now. <laughs> I don't really understand. Like with people working from home, I don't know who's, when, what, you know, like, does it look like Chris has been working? no like dan you're that jacket tells me you haven't been working and look at me I don't, I'm not working. I don't i've been working it baby working it yeah, <laughs> ready <so>. for this <laughs> anyways well boys uh how do you feel getting ready to go into the fourth or fifth brunchies <laughs> i feel good man i feel good we were we had to reschedule this a couple times because we just wanted to make sure everybody was ready and now i feel like i've got i've got some really good award winners to to talk about yeah yeah the votes have been tallied and you know we've got a lot of the same categories we've done in years past and uh, a new one or two if you're familiar with the brunchies but i'm excited we covered a lot of interesting and fun topics this year um that uh it's, there's gonna be some tough choices here amongst the three of us to decide these brunch shoe winners. So uh, I'm ready, boys. I'm, I'm excited for this. This is one of my, one of, if not my favorite show of the year. Nice. Well, let's get it started with favorite moment of 2023. Let's start out heavy hitters. Boys, what was your favorite moment of 2023? Christopher, I'm going to start with you. All right, man. Well, I, uh, we had a baby. So that'll like, do it. Adding a new member to the family pretty much tops the charts on anything else that could have happened for the year. So baby number three, happy, healthy. If you missed the episode where I talked about how she arrived, you should probably listen to that because it was it <laughs> happened quick. She got into this world quickly, um, but it's been great ever since. So yeah, birth of uh, our third baby girl, for sure. Nice. And to be clear, that brunchy goes to Katie and Katie only. That is not Chris giving himself a brunchy. <laughs> right. No. Well, yeah. I mean, it either goes to 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 the baby or to Katie, or like it's a shared award where like the baby accepts the award, but Katie mm. speaks on behalf of the baby. Like the, maybe okay. one of those. Mm. Mm. I like that. Yeah. We'll be awaiting okay. the speech. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dan, favorite <laughs> moment of 2023. Oh, uh, a lot. Yeah. He starting off heavy here. I love it. A lot of great moments to pick from, uh, both personally and in the life of this podcast and other things that we do, uh, you know, personally, the trip to London that I got to take with my wife was, was definitely up there considered a heavy nominee. Uh, my man CM Punk returning to the WWE late in the year in November, making a strong case for moment of the year. Uh, boys, my favorite moment on the podcast this year might have been a topic that came up a couple of times where everybody was complaining about the smoke from the Canadian wildfires, but not the fires themselves. <laughs> One of my favorite moments of the year, no doubt about it. Uh, some strong, strong nominees, but you know what? I have to give it to my man. This happened on the 4th of July, Joey Chestnut saving the oh Nathan's God. famous hot dog eating contest when it was at risk of cancellation after long postponement after postponement, bad weather in the area of, uh, of New York and Joey Chestnut, that image, that image of him storming out of shelter 
And just with that pissed off look on his face with a security guard who looked frightened himself at the death stare that Joey had on his face that says, I'm getting the guys and we're doing this MFR. It was incredible, historic. So I got to give the brunchy for favorite moment of the year to the champ, Joey Chestnut. <laughs> Classic. I'm starting to think, <laughs> I'm starting to think Dan's being, he's like, he's been bought, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Just fitting Joey Chestnut references in where they don't need you don't they didn't even belong. I mean, he's talking about Joey Chestnut. <laughs> like, even Joey Chestnut would be like, fam, like chill out. Like, uh, who are you wearing this evening? Oh, this is uh thank you to Nathan's uh for this wonderful gold jacket that I'm supporting <laughs> this evening for the brunchies. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh man. Uh, my favorite moment of 2023 happened recently and it happened with you two plus a couple others. Uh, us just honestly doing a, a podcast without recording it in Chris's, you know, kitchen while <laughs> I was holding Hallie for like three hours. That honestly was one of my favorite moments and my favorite moment of 2023. It was just cool to do. Like I look back on it. Like, I don't think I realized it in the moment, but then it was like, wow. Like we well, like we don't get those chances to do that too often to just sit there and do nothing and just chat about nothing. And I'm like holding the baby or whatever. So like, it was just cool. And like, yeah, I wish we would have recorded it though. We really should have. That was a mistake. And that's classic <laughs> brunch breakdown right there. It's like, we were all together, but we didn't do a podcast. So yeah. So next time I'll, I'll you know, hold Chris's baby number four and we'll uh, do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't go there dd don't go there not ready <laughs> yeah yeah i love that though. you're right we we don't get we don't get those moments very often with uh really just the three of us chatting uh in person um other yes. than what we do each and every week so that was a that was a cool moment this year yeah. good winner all right well let's get into uh what we talk about a lot every single week let's get into the music categories here let's talk about it best song of the year and I will start since I went last. Uh, I, this could have went a bunch of different ways, like a ton. Like, I love this year in music because a lot of huge artists didn't put out music this year. So, like, you got to listen to a lot of different music without, you know, getting cluttered in the way. Of course, Drake put out 800 songs. But, like, you know, <laughs> everyone else kind of, like, chilled out this year, it seemed like. But uh, uh, I am going my best song of the year. And this was a tough one. Went through it by Young Thug. And the reason why is because I don't know when we're going to get another Young Thug song again because he's currently in jail for what seems like it's going to be a very long time. And <laughs> this song is amazing. <laughs> and he just floats on it. And it's so good. And it's just, and it, it just pumps you up because it's like this, you know, from the bottom to like started from the bottom, people killing his confidence and then just, you know, rising up, putting an S on your chest. And it's awesome. Also, another reason why it's my favorite is because um, and it's kind of makes me sad is because we missed out on a moment at concerts and at festivals because in the chorus, he says, save the world in a dress, baby. And so we missed out on a moment of having a lot of thugged out dudes in the audience screaming, save the world in a dress, baby. <laughs> and so I, you know, and that's just my favorite song of the year, but there were so many, it was, this was tough for me, but uh, yeah, went through it by Young Thug. And I'll be accepting a, the award uh, on his behalf because he's definitely yeah. <laughs> very gracious of you. Very gracious of you. Um, yeah, tough, tough category. I mean, to just pick one song, um, so many going back through the year. Um, Olivia Rodrigo, Blink One Eighty Two, definitely heavy nominees for for your boy Steel City here, but. A song that I knew I loved at first, but I don't think I realized how much I loved it until kind of some more time went on. And this came out a little earlier in the year. Um, and it was just really the one of two songs we've heard from this artist this year. So it had me like itching and ready for more. And it's not there yet. We're getting more in 2024, but Green Honda by Benny is just a phenomenal song to put you in a good mood. It just it just is I love uh how unique really the the style of the song is. 
and it's a it was a little bit outside the box for for Benny, but I mean you know that's my girl, has been for a long time. She's won many a brunchy before, so how can I not give it to her again? Green Honda by Benny, congratulations. Congrats nice. to Benny. Go for it, Chris. Um, <clears throat> so my best song of the year, I went with uh, "Take Me With You." by neck deep and um you know like a lot of bands that i listen to and that i love when they put out new albums or put out new songs sometimes i get nervous because i feel like the lane that i really enjoy with pop punk and like the just the vibe and the spirit that i enjoy from that genre bands seem to like come into it and then get out of it really quick and neck deep for whatever reason they they don't stray from a lot of those things that I love about the genre so much where it's like delivering the uh the emotion and the enthusiasm while like whether it be serious or uh you know singing about hard times or singing about breakups or like whatever it may be it still always makes you feel good and I love that about neck deep um so yeah that was my that was my song of the year take me with you just because uh, i mean it's such a damn good song but they just they continue to stay in the lane that i love and i love them for that they take you with they they take you with them hey see yeah, yeah. there you go they yeah. do what happens <laughs> Well, those are our songs of the year. These will all be on the Sounds of Brunch playlist. Thanks to everybody who's been listening and everybody who's like following that. Or what do you do on Spotify? Do you follow the playlist? Do you subscribe to the playlist? Whatever the hell you do on there. Yeah. Shouts to all the people who listen to that every single week. Shouts to everybody. And those all be on there. And here's my favorite category. The worst song of the year. Because (laughs) I just love to know what songs got on your nerves this year and songs you hated from Jump. And I'll go, worst song of the year, Lil Boo Thang. Don't even care who it's by. Don't care. Don't care. (laughs) Lil Boo Thang. Hate that song so much. Hated it from day one. It's terrible. Can't stand it. And I knew when I heard it for the first time that I was like, this song is going to be on every commercial for TV shows. It's going to be on a bunch of commercials. Like, this guy's going to be doing awkward performances, like, on the Today Show. Because, like, it it, it did everything. And I even knew the people who were going to like it, including my wife. I knew she was going to like this song. Because this song was made for people who hate music. I promise you. This was (laughs) what it was. So this song was made for. Lil Boo Thang, worst song of the year, possibly the decade. We'll see. In the brunchies in 2029. Damn. Ooh. Didn't realize you were that strongly against oh, it. Oh, dude. And I you know what? It. And you know what a lot of people are doing now too? You know, about that song and along with songs that are uh sampling, right? That song samples uh what you've got the best of my love, whatever that song is called. Mm-hmm. They're using the original soundtrack, the original sound, the original song in commercials now too, which probably cost way less, but it yep. makes you think of that of Lil Boo thing. It makes you think of that, but it's the original song that he sampled. It's it's really annoying. It's really annoying. Um, Go for it, <laughs> fellas. Well, speaking of trash, um, Morgan Wallen, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, I could give it to you for any of your songs, uh, but last night was just everywhere, and it wouldn't go away. Like a bad wildfire in Canada. It just couldn't get put out. It wouldn't go away. Um, so it has to go to him. It, it has to go to him. Whenever a true like twangy country song hits pop radio and stays at the top of the pop charts it it's literally a night, nightmare for me so congrats i suppose you trash bag <laughs> dan do you ever find yourself conflicted because morgan wallen looks exactly like kenny pickett yes yes <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard uh um, that's tough that's tough All right, boys, this is like probably my least favorite category that we do on the brunchies every year. Um, Because I just like, I don't like to, if I hear a bad song, I just move on from it, right? And I don't listen to the radio much, so I don't get subjected to a lot of like, you know, the songs. I don't get subjected to anything unless I want to listen to. I I listen to what I want to listen to. So I went looking on some lists to get other people's opinions on what the worst song of the year was. And I am picking this one only so that Dan can rebut it 
okay? Because Ooh. I saw this song on multiple lists, okay? And shoot, where'd it go? I Want to Be Software by Grimes was on multiple <laughs> lists as one of the top 10 worst songs of 2023. And so, like, Dan, I don't know if you can explain this one for Grimes, but may- maybe Grimes needs a better 2024. Uh, she does. Uh, I'll <laughs> okay. be the first person to say that. <laughs> she does. Um, what Grimes has done this year, and ha- she has fully embraced the idea of using her voice in AI for people to make music, even music that's not her own. And she already had a unique style to her music, right? Um, like spacey, electronic, weird. And it's difficult because Grimes, there's plenty of interviews where she talks about how she's, she doesn't see herself as a singer. She gets nervous when she sings. So I don't think she understands that she's got talent to sing. And so instead of these like, ah, ah, like weird, weird, spacey noises, and there's been way too much of that. She's using way too much artificial intelligence to create music and did so this year. Let's get back to the OG, the old school Grimes. I mean, like, give me California. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's let's go there. So I kind of I kind of get it. I can't fully defend Grimes in this situation because I haven't been a huge fan of what she's done this year. Just fully, you know, synth is synth sounds artificial enough enough. We don't need to add intelligence to the whole thing and think that it sounds good. All right. So maybe we tack, uh, we, we award this to Grimes and AI. Beautiful. All right. Down for that. Dude, <laughs> dude the, good God. That whole, her thing that she doesn't think of herself as a singer is like the most I've had multiple babies with Elon Musk answer that you could possibly give. <laughs> like, true. Jesus true. Yeah. Well, those yeah. are our worst songs of the year. <laughs> <laughs> your brunchies are coming in the mail and i'll find out whoever sings little boo thing i don't know what that person's name is paul paul something okay cool that's about that's as much as i got for you it's My gonna be paul, paul. <laughs> it's gonna be addressed <laughs> to paul and uh i don't know yeah paul california somewhere it'll get there <laughs> <laughs> all right now let's get to album of the year okay my album of the year this year was very simple because honestly, Apple Music's replay told me what it was and I knew what it was. Teddy Swims, I've tried everything but therapy part one, 100% the album of the year because it it's like 33 minutes long. It's 11 songs and you're out. So what that also means is that when it starts playing again, you just keep on playing it and it just goes and it's so good and it's amazing just r&b soulful music and it put me in my feelings with the song suitcase which really took me back to a time in my life where i was a wild boy and uh yeah and that's what that song takes me back to i'm not gonna get into details there but if you knew me at that time you know what i'm talking about but anyways uh yeah songs like suitcase and lose control is you know just a humongous song and everywhere and just that whole album from beginning to end is so good and i just love that it's an album you know, not just a data dump of songs like so many people do these days. Drake, even though I've come around on For All the Dogs, I actually really like that album, but you can't replay it. It takes you forever to get through it. So anyways, <laughs> Teddy Swims, I've tried everything but therapy part one. Congrats on your brunchy, Teddy. There's probably something to be said for that uh, in like 2024 releasing shorter albums. Can you think about like when you release an album of... 18 20 25 songs like people aren't going to be able to hear the songs enough times to like actually fall in love with all of them whereas like when we were growing up like a lot of albums were 28 minutes 32 minutes 35 minutes and you just listen to them over and over again and then you knew every song and every word like Mm -hmm. maybe that's a maybe that's a, a move for artists here in 2024 um my album of the year is also a short one it's from a band called honey creek 
They are from my native land of Wisconsin. Uh, their album, Self Preservation. These guys, nobody knows about these guys. Like literally nobody knows about these guys. I've featured them a few times. I think they're unbelievable. I think they are a band that should be way, 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 way bigger than they are right now. And hopefully this brunchy gets them some additional attention. But great pop punk band uh, from the great white north, Wisconsin. Nice. Dude, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah. Constantly shouted out on the brunch breakdown. Yeah. What are our listeners yeah. in Wisconsin? What what, what what our listenership in Wisconsin looks like? There's some. <laughs> Should be strong. Yeah. Should be strong. <laughs> There's some. We're just like on the low, we're Giannis's favorite podcast. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. We got to get Damian Lillard in on the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. There we go. That's true. Ah, oh, man. I should have put one of his songs. I made it one of his songs, Song of the Year. Then he'd have oh. to come on. Missed opportunity. Shoot. Next year. Yeah. Next year. Next Dave. year, Dave. Next, Next year, year, Dave. <laughs> uh, album of the Year, boys. Th- this was tougher than Song of the Year for me. A um, lot of great nominees. Uh, I did consider Teddy Swims like UDD. I've tried everything but therapy. I mean, it was difficult for me not to pick that album. Honestly, it's nearly perfect. Uh, it's fantastic. What a year for him. Uh, Gus Dapperton put out his album uh, Henge, which was fantastic uh, earlier this year. But it came down to two. It came down to two for me. And I honestly don't even know how I can make that. I, I haven't made the decision up until this point. I've just had the two on my list. Uh, and I'll make the decision uh, right here, live. Um, Post Malone Austin is not going to get the award, but that's going to be my runner-up. Phenomenal. Phenomenal album that I love. But I have to give it to Blink-182 for one more time. I have to do it. Because I listened to that album the most this year. Spotify told me so. So I have to go with that. And just because... This was unlike any other uh, Blink album we've had in a very long time. In a very long time. Um, Is it perfect? I don't know. I don't know. But it was just more than what anybody anybody could have wanted or expected. And I was just amazed. And I still love that album. Every song on it is fantastic. So, sorry, Post Malone. Not yours this year, but Blink-182. One more time. Congratulations. There we go. Can I tack on a brunchy for uh, announcing an album and a associated tour for that album by playing a show in a Denny's? Because Blink-182 did that this year <laughs> and it was amazing. Uh, that yes. That's like the coolest thing I think I saw on social media this year. Dude, you know, you mentioning Blink, that's cool. Because that's like, honestly, that was like one of the moments of the year. Seeing them at Coachella was cool because it was like, I don't know. I mean, listen, because of the health scares and things of this this band that all the things that they've escaped and gotten and gone through, I'm like, this might be the last time anyone sees them. I have no idea. That's kind of what it felt like, sort of like being in the moment with Blink. So picking that as your album sure. of the year, because like, are we getting another Blink album? Probably not. Well, this was in their 50s by the time they put <laughs> out their next album. So like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> Well, those are our albums of the year. Okay, let's get into uh, some uh, sports categories here, boys. Uh, And let's go sports story of the year. Christopher, give it to us. All right, so I'm going to roll my eyes as I say my brunchy because I rolled my (laughs) eyes all fall. But, like, the sports story of the year probably has to be Dion at Colorado. Like... This isn't one where I'm like, I, I, I loved it. Let's like (laughs) from the start, I was like, this is so stupid. Like it, like it kind of felt like how, like as a country, we at one point elected a reality TV star to run the country. Like, I felt like we were like hiring a reality TV star to run a college football program, but he, a program that nobody cared about. And then all of a sudden we're supposed to care about it because they won the first two games of the season. And then like nobody ever kind of followed up and talked a lot about how they finished four and eight. 
but then he was also named sportsman of the year. And you could tell like sports illustrated wrote that when they were probably like four and one, (laughs) you know, like it was so stupid. It was so bizarre, but I don't know of anything personally for me from the year in sports that like I can remember getting more attention than Dion. Cause it was like, even from the moment he got the job, he like fired the team of college kids. He like fired them. And then he, he brought in 50 new players. I I don't know. It was, it was a crazy story. So I, that, that's, that's what I had to go with. Bring him my luggage. Get in the portal. Bring him my luggage. And it's Louie. <laughs> what a line. We already got a quarterback, so if you play that position, sorry. Oh, God. Dion. Uh, Dan, sports story of the year. Uh, mine's going to go way back. Um, it's going to go way back. You know, even it's something that didn't actually even feel like it occurred in 2023, but it happened on. The second day of of uh, 2023, January 2nd, and a story that bled on for weeks and months. And of course, I'm talking about Tamar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills. That story was so big, bigger than sports. It became global, that story. Just absolutely fascinating to go through those ups and downs. And everybody was hanging on every hour looking for an update in those first couple of days to find out what was going to happen to him. Of course, we all know by now what happens uh, and what happened. And, you know, find somehow found his way back on the football field in the same calendar year is just unbelievable. Um, So that, that was by far and away the easy choice for sports story of the year for me. Something that, yeah, seemed like it was longer than a year ago, but kicked off our year just two days old yeah i can't believe that happened this year i truly feel like that was ages ago almost yeah but uh but yeah dude that's i mean that's one yeah man that story that's we i thought we saw somebody die so that's just such a weird thing to be like yeah we really thought yeah somebody died so exactly yeah yeah all right, my sports story of the year, Colorado football. Can't believe me and Chris got this at the same. Uh, yeah, it's Colorado <laughs> football for sure. Do you know they have three, three, three of the top 10 most watched college football games that aren't the college football playoff or a national championship of any kind? Three this year of the most watched college football games. Like, that's why it's the biggest story. And I find it so crazy that all it took was for a coach to not be boring for this to happen. (laughs) Yeah. That's all it took. And another fascinating thing was they are the worst team to ever get everybody's best shot. Like, you know why (laughs) we know, like we know Oregon's coaches first and last name. I had no, like, listen, I know a lot of things about Oregon football and none of them has to do with their head coach. I know that they had color changing cleats at some point this season. Like we all know Oregon football is usually decent, but like, I know their coach was, they play Colorado, a terrible team. Oregon, one of the best teams in the country all year. Dan Lanning's got all these cameras in front of him. He says that whole, like, we're, you know, we're not about clicks or whatever. Like, I don't know. Whatever the hell he said that everybody was super hyped about. And I'm just like, wow. Like, you know going in that you're going to beat this team 100 to nothing if you feel like it. And they basically did. They basically And, did. like, <laughs> that's Oregon's highlight of the season. Like, no one cared about Oregon-Washington. We cared about oregon Colorado. <laughs> like people on the East coast are up at 2 AM watching Colorado. Like, what were we doing? I don't know, but that's the sports story of the year. Like, cause I, cause we're going to look back on that and be like, wait, Colorado USC is the eighth most watched college football game of the last 28 years. What are we doing? But that's what we did. And <laughs> you know, Colorado football, it's there's, I, there's no other sports story that took the nation by storm. Like I couldn't believe it. Like it was so crazy. Cause it was old, It was like old school Twitter. It felt like I'm on my couch at 11 o'clock. I like open up Twitter and I see people talking about Colorado and Colorado state. And then I like, and it's everyone's, I mean, East coast everywhere, everyone's talking about it. And it's like sports story of the year for better or worse. Even even in defeat, they were relevant. Like just yesterday, I saw Dion. Like, wh- who's still talking? Why is why is he still being interviewed? 
they didn't make a bowl and he was interviewed <laughs> and quoted saying like you're not going to leave me out of the college football playoff because i bring eyeballs like i i get people watch me and i'm like bro you won four games why are we still talking about this but like he's still <laughs> it's still the sports story of the year and uh yeah it's unbelievable God. and a strong nominee to repeat back to back yeah right in yeah 2024 with the expansion of the playoff coming and colorado seemingly going to be better next season i mean boy oh boy this thing could just really catch even more fire and create more chaos and more and more colorado talk yes oh crazy god you know what a year in sports all right <laughs> team of the year um i will go mine's simple taylor swift and travis kelsey team of the year <laughs> trailer they are my team of the year there's no team that captivated me this year like trailer shouts to taylor and travis there you go i did think Chris, about that like should i do like team of like people or something um but i went gentlemen we have elected our own president on this podcast and his name is Dwayne the rock johnson and uh, he owns a football league. So the winner of that football league should be team of the year since he is our president elect. Uh, so shout out to the Arlington Renegades of the XFL. You are my team of the year. Uh, congrats on your brunchy. I don't even know if you still have a stadium to play in, but we'll send it to the one you were in. And hopefully you can display it in your trophy case right <laughs> next to that XFL championship trophy. I like that. That's a great XFL pick. love on the brunch breakdown. Let's go. Great pick. Great pick there. Um, yeah, a lot of tough choices on this one. Um, I almost thought about just giving it to women's college basketball and, you know, particularly uh, Iowa and LSU. Uh, but what, in, I mean, UConn, what does that sport, the year that that sport had was fantastic and hope that it continues its upward trajectory. Um, I thought about, uh, the Chiefs, uh, yeah, they won the Super Bowl, but they also acquired Taylor Swift, as you mentioned, Didi. So strong, strong candidate. Um, but I'm giving it to Wrexham AFC. That's right. The soccer or foot football club owned by Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney, um had a remarkable season as they as they you know became owners of this team, followed it around documentary style for us all to watch and see. They got promoted to the football league for the first time in 15 years, just like crazy Ted Lasso shit that shouldn't be happening in real life. It should be a mockumentary, but it was real. And, uh, you know, congrats to them and uh, Wrexham AFC team of the year. <laughs> nice. All right. Athlete of the year. Um, it's LeBron James and it might be until he's done playing. So this might be just an ongoing thing for me. So LeBron, you are my athlete of the year. Come get your brunchy. You, got, you understand, me and LeBron are the same age. Like, he turns 39, like, I think today or tomorrow or something. And I turned 39 in February. And I jumped to touch rim a few weeks ago and, like, came down, felt really weird about it. <laughs> Didn't I, I touched rim. Don't get – I did. But, like, after doing that, I was like, you know what? Probably shouldn't do it. This fool's out here averaging 25, 7, and 7. Oh, the goddamn Lakers just won the in-season <laughs> tournament. For, I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. You just shouldn't be able to do that at 39. Like we talked about Tom Brady so much, but like Tom Brady is not as athletic as LeBron James. Like LeBron is out here running and jumping with kids who are 18 years old. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I do not. Like his son is playing college basketball. And when your son is playing college basketball and you were 39, he should be better than you. LeBron's kid can't beat him. Can't just can't do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Athlete of the year, dad of the year, all the things. It's LeBron. Just done. That's yeah. When you put it that way, I mean, shit. Pretty impressive. I'm gonna go yeah. the other you said he he's playing with like 18 year olds. I'm I'm gonna go in that other direction. Um, I picked for my athlete of the year Connor Bedard simply for like making hockey more relevant and like doing it in a way that the previous generation of stars really haven't like 
Sid and Ovi and those guys from from our generation coming up with hockey kind of are still like of the old guard with hockey where like you reserve your personality. You don't say too much when you score, you act like you've been there before. This kid's going out there scoring like lacrosse style goals from behind the, from behind the net and like actually saying things in interviews and being entertained. Like, I don't know. I hope there's more superstars coming up in the league that are like him because it could help hockey get more relevant and, and be, just more entertaining all around. Um, there were a lot of candidates. This is a tough one. And admittedly, like at first I was going to be like, okay, well, Otani with that money would go. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good. And then I was like, should it be Bobby Bonilla? Cause he's still getting paid. Like maybe he should be the athlete of the year this year, but I decided to strip all that stuff away and go with one of the up and comers. So Connor Bedard, congratulations. Great pick. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hockey needs more like that. more of that. Yes. You're exactly right. Exactly right. Um, yeah, I I thought about this a lot too. Kind of going back to my team of the year category there. You know, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese were in there. Uh, maybe Messi coming to Miami was kind of a big deal for MLS. I don't think a lot of people thought that anybody would care. And then he came over here and was just like scoring constantly. Um, of course, Joseph Chestnut. Nominee, strong nominee. Why not? Not only for winning, but saving the contest. Uh, but Chris, I'm going to give it to the guy you just mentioned there, Shohei Otani. MVP on and off the field. Literally won the MVP, got hurt, kept hitting when he couldn't pitch, and then got that unbelievable contract for $700 million. Um, I mean, how could you top that? The, the, the guy is a two way player, the best two way player to do it, and he's getting paid the most obscene amount of money uh, that we've ever seen in a sports contract before. So it's got to go to him. Got to go to him. And he got his friend to come over too and sign with the Dodgers. The other amazing pitcher. Like, oh boy, that team. If the Dodgers aren't team of the year next year, they don't <laughs> mess up. They don't real messed up. Listen, Colorado got our team of the year who they went four and eight. So if the Dodgers <laughs> fail to make it to the World Series even, <laughs> like they're they might be our team of the year <laughs> true true <laughs> god all right well uh those are our sports categories doesn't mean athletes might not show up on the rest of this but we'll see what happens all right uh best thing we watched this year christopher best thing you watched let's get it this was a tough category boys um I don't because Chris is like football can't win. <laughs> <laughs> it's too, it's too, it's too, it's too, it's too generic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Pitt won one game this too year. Big. So whatever that was, too that big. was the best thing I watched. Uh, um, Pitt Wofford when our quarterback could actually throw. Um, no, I don't want, I'm not going to do. Yeah. I mean, I football, I have watched less. I've watched less than ever before in my life this year just less of everything um less sports less movies less tv um so i'd like really dig deep to find out like what what things that i even watched this year that were new this year right and um the one i landed on i feel okay about it there like this is kind of like a by default type of award um but i do love like I love Peter Pan. Okay. And I know Dan, you love Peter Pan too. And like some of the different things uh, like movies associated with that. And there was a Peter Pan and Wendy that came out this past year that I actually really, really liked on Disney plus. Um, and like that, I, literally when I went through the list of like movies that came out in 2023, what did I see? That was one of like three things that I've seen. So I'm awarding it to that kind of by default because, and also cause I didn't want to say, uh, you know, the college football playoff. I don't know what, what, you know, let's, it's probably what I said last if year. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken last year, yeah, I thought maybe you had uh Katie pick this for you because you didn't have anything. Oh, well, there you go. So at least I picked something for myself. This yeah. Time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we changed this category to best thing we watched is so you could say anything. And last week right. you talked about abandoned buildings on TikTok, And I was like, I hope we get more of that next week at the brunchies oh. uh, and you give us peter pan and wendy well 
where's Kanye when you need him? <laughs> I didn't even think about social media because that come goes take, so fast. Come take the brunchy away. I've seen a lot of, uh, a, maybe, maybe I should change it. I've seen a lot of videos recently of abandoned buildings in New Orleans that they just haven't come back to since Hurricane Katrina, which is crazy. Like almost 20 years ago, like huge hospitals, prisons, apparently like over 500 inmates escaped this one prison because like it just was getting flooded so fast that they had to evacuate it. And they were like, hey, like if you can get out of here, good for you. And they just left. And like 500 guys were unaccounted for and they they assumed some of them died, but like some of them also probably are just like, out there living so that's crazy wow wow maybe maybe that's it all right sorry peter pan and wendy uh this one goes Ooh, out to all of those it. escaped hurricane katrina inmates you, you just pulled a la la land on those you folks did. right there is what you yeah, did you just you la did. la land them. <laughs> sorry sorry uh when i when i started looking at abandoned houses uh, places on tiktok it took me to the century three mall and i got very sad there are so <laughs> many videos about the century three mall on tiktok oh my god abandoned mall like, tiktok is real oh that just made me so it made me so sad <laughs> so sad oh, all man. right dan best thing you watched best thing i watched this year um yeah this was tough this was tough i it's we also, this was a year where we caught up on a lot of stuff that was already popular. <laughs> so, and we were late to the scene because either we didn't have the streaming service at the time, uh, or we just didn't think it was that good. And then we realized four seasons into something. Oh, actually, this sounds like it's actually pretty good. Um, <laughs> Ted Lasso was, of course, the end of Ted Lasso was great to watch this year. DD, I know that's not your favorite show, yeah. um, but a good nominee. Uh, a show called Live live to 100 life in the blue zones on netflix it's a four part just a four episode short i i really consider giving it to this show um if you haven't watched it i encourage you to do it it's on netflix called again live to 100 life in the blue zones this guy goes out and really researches like the reasons why people are living uh you know they're centarians they're living to 100 100 uh in these areas called blue zones throughout the world but I'm not going to give it to that. I'm giving it to Succession. Uh, Succession, of course, on um, Max, formerly known as HBO Max, um, ended its uh, series with its fourth season this year. And I'm not just giving it to it because of the fourth season. Again, this was something that my wife and I had started watching this year after it had already been out for three seasons. And essentially binge watched it on a weekly basis one episode a week it took us almost the entire year to get through the whole series because we had four seasons to get through and so we'd be like literally obsessed with this thing all year long i usually don't like shows like that but i thought it was one of the best things easily i've ever watched and definitely the best thing i watched this year so uh shout out uh to succession on max best thing i watched this year the best thing I watched this year was The Bear. It's a show on Hulu about a family restaurant. And it is the most, it is so funny and so dramatic and so great. And like, at first I didn't know what kind of show I was watching. Because if you, so here's just a little warning. Because I've heard a couple people say this. You have to understand the show is about a restaurant. So the intense moments that aren't really intense have to show them cutting things like meat or cutting things. So, but they're chefs. So they know how to use a knife, not like you who doesn't know how to use a knife. So once you get past that after episode two, you're going to love this show. But like, I'm just letting you know, no one gets their fingers cut off. No one like barely cuts themselves <laughs> or, like chefs. They wear those gloves. They like don't cut themselves, all that stuff. But it is very like jarring at first because the way that they shoot it is so cool. And but it's like very like dramatic the way that they're showing them like cut these carrots or whatever the hell that they're cutting. But like and it's made people and I've heard people say like, oh, yeah, like you can't like I couldn't watch it. Like I was just I just know somebody's gonna cut their finger off at some point. No one does. Promise you. Anyways, <laughs> it's two seasons in and it's awesome and like get on it it's i think the first season's eight episodes second season's 10 episodes so 
it's a great watch. You'll be like, oh my God, flying through. It's 30 minutes or 22 minutes, whatever. Like the show's awesome. And it's so funny and so heartfelt and great. The Bear, Hulu, get on it. I've heard about that. Yeah, I mean, we, we, uh, we're without Hulu at the moment, but uh, we're anxious to watch that when, when she comes back. Get on it. All right. Well, The Brunchy. Let's give out some more brunchies, boys. Uh, the brunchy for thing we got the most wrong this year, boys. What is the thing you got the most <laughs> wrong? Chris, you're I... shaking your head like there's nothing. <laughs> no, it's like nothing. I've been right about everything. No, I got, what are you talking about? I got a lot. I got a lot wrong this year. Uh, the one that stuck out to me was like buying into preseason training camp storylines like listening mm. and believing the shit that people say before football season starts okay i totally bought into the fact that like Pitt brought in this transfer quarterback who had worked with the offensive coordinator at a different school they had success he was going to come here and it was going to be a great season like four or five games into the season we found out like he actually like had issues and couldn't throw a football because of like structural shit. Okay. Then they knew that before the season, but they tried to like put a game plan in place to make it work with him. And the season was terrible. Um, Kenny Pickett lit up the preseason. And I was like, you know what? It's just, he, after that first year, he, you know, figured some stuff out, got a proper off season, worked with his wide receivers, uh, and his, his coaches. And it's going to be a great offense, uh, this this season and holy shit uh we've uh, fired offensive coordinator later now we're through he's not even playing right now because he's in, in the Steelers are like well I don't know whether whatever their record is is not good probably not going to make the play it's just like oh my god I bought into all of it and I'm not going to do that this year I don't think I'm going to watch or read any interviews uh in August this coming this coming year but uh yeah I I got football wrong boys <laughs> hard wrong oh god you got the ex the exact opposite of what happened at lsu this year because there's video of like the arizona state like football team like saying that like Jaden daniels sucks and he's terrible and like good riddance like dude's terrible and he won the heisman so. <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah. uh all right thing i got the most wrong this year guys this goes into brunch court. Uh, Starry that took over for Sierra Mist is good and doesn't taste <laughs> like Sierra Mist and doesn't taste like Sprite. Not as good as Sprite, but it's not the same. I just thought it was Sierra Mist with new packaging. Oh, no, it's different, and it tastes good. It's another lemon and lime soda. That's good, guys. I saw, wow. I'm very sorry to Starry. Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. But I got that the most wrong this year. The most wrong. Like, shouts to Starry. You, you are a different drink. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, we were all against the idea of Starry. Mm -hmm. But, wow, tough pill to swallow. But that's good. Yeah. That's good. Um. I'm I'm going to go with I I really didn't think Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift would last as long as they have so far. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought this was gonna it was either not true, some publicity thing, or like she was gonna realize this dude is annoying as all hell. What what am I thinking? I should have trusted Selena Gomez. This is not this is not a good idea. This is not a good idea. And here we are a couple months later and it's only getting, you know, more fired up and it's kind of making me sick. Um, so yeah, that, that I really thought wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna go well. Thought, you know, Twitter changing its name to X was a publicity stunt. Wrong about that. Um, I also thought the Steelers would have a good season. I placed my first legal, legal uh, sports wager uh, that they'd hit the over under of eight and a half. And here we are um, on thin ice. <laughs> But whether or not that's going to hit, uh, but that's still to be determined. Still to be determined. Uh, but so I had to go with yeah, uh, 
Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey actually making it into what seems like an actual relationship. Gross. The good, the good thing about their relationship continuing is there's more conspiracy theories about why they're together, and I'm enjoying all of them. So, <laughs> right. it's the gift that keeps on giving. It really does. It really does. Like I just can't <laughs> wait for their. There's fully going to be like a Hallmark Christmas movie, like with a football player and a pop star next year, and I can't wait. That's <laughs> the thing can't. I'm the most excited about. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, let's go to our best thing we ate in 2023 daniel what's the best thing you ate in 2023 i had i had hmm, this was this was also every category it was really really difficult um i'm giving it to the uh i had a gnocchi bread bowl at uh dianoyas one of the best uh local italian places here in pittsburgh and this was this is mind-blowing pasta in incredible bread bowl it's just like i just want to you just want to take the whole thing and eat it basically that's the power of the bread bowl you can just eat the whole thing but you got to be a little bit sophisticated it's a nicer establishment so you're eating ripping and eating just just a phenomenal phenomenal dish <laughs> he is out <laughs> um runner up runner up was giving to uh taylor swift night at Cinderling's Brewing, where we had uh, the the twenty two meal, which was uh, chicken tenders with twenty two dipping sauces, and they were all amazing. But uh, just pick up a plate, and eat it already. The gnocchi bread bowl, the annoyance. best thing I ate this year. I've, I've never heard anybody. What did you say? This is mind blowing pasta. I've never heard anybody say that before. <laughs> Didi, is that what got you? No, it was the I was ripping and I was eating. And I was ripping. And I was eating. <laughs> Just ripping that bread, eating it up. More gnocchi on the on the fork. Rip the bread bowl. Delicious. Delicious. Too good. Too good. We should have Joey. Which one Chestnut. of you ever has the most composure left to go next? We should have Joey Chestnut <laughs> competitively eat that thing and see how fast he yes. rips and eats and rips and eats. Yeah, it's just a lot going on there. Oh. All right, I'll go next and let Didi compose himself. <laughs> um, Last year, I believe the best thing uh, that I ate for this category was a brunch that we made and stumbled upon, and it was phenomenal. And I have another one of those for you boys this year. Katie did this um, berry cream cheese croissant bake that like changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. Maybe I'll have to dig up the recipe and we can share it with the brunch breakdown audience on the socials. Um, but it was phenomenal. And uh, it just felt right to award this brunch with a brunchy because brunch. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to enjoying this thing a lot in 2024 as well. Wow. Why didn't she make that when I came over? She must not like you. I don't know. Uh, she must not. Damn, yeah. Katie. I've been wow. slighted. All right. Well, <laughs> that sounds delicious, by the way. It was great. All right. So the best thing I ate, uh, me and Siobhan went, got away to Scottsdale over the past year and went to this place called Bourbon and Bones already. That's the name of the restaurant. Like, come on. <laughs> and I had this rosemary and wood, what's it called? Woodford Reserve a bourbon steak. And it was the best thing ever. And they flambéed it right at my table, and it was the best thing I've ever had in my life. Honestly, the best steak I've ever had. I, there's no, I honestly, when I ate my own steak this year, I wanted to spit on it because I was like, "What is this? It's your trash. Because <laughs> you you can't make you like literally just slap yourself in the face. Like you just you suck compared to whatever chef whoever chef at Bourbon and Bones made the steak you had. It really almost ruined steak for me. That's how good it was. So that's the brunchy shouts the Bourbon and Bones in Scottsdale. You gotta be careful. Yeah, nice. I remember too, when you had that. The meal's too good, and you can ruin other meals. It's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a good point you made there, Dee. Like Dan, is Dan ever gonna be able Life to eat changing. pasta again? Yeah. I don't know. Mind blowing, dude. Not seriously. like that. Not a bread bowl. Not a bread bowl. Only there. Rip, ripping and eating. Oh boy. <laughs> good God. All right. <laughs> the best 
thing we drank this year. Gentlemen, Daniel, you are we usually go last. We'll let you go first because hey, you 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 probably have more to say than we will about whatever. That's fair. Doing. That's very fair. Uh yes. <laughs> uh I'm giving this award to the adversarial uh beer from Ill Will Brewing. Uh boys, this was many, many moons ago. Uh, I think back in March of uh 2023 where it's their uh chocolate peanut butter smoothie beer uh otherwise known as a buckeye in uh the buckeye state state and it was like an alcoholic milkshake somehow they turned this thing into a beer um i've got over 1200 beers checked in on untapped this is the only beer i have ever given a five star rating to and it happened this year it was that damn good so the adversarial from ill will brewing cheers to you hope to have you again someday easily best thing i drank i want chris's sweatshirt i just realized this like oh the one I, he's I worn for the last three episodes you just now he's worn it for three episodes i did not notice until just now i want that yeah. sweatshirt yeah yeah i need it I need that in my life. That's when we when we go on our stadium tour, DD. Maybe you can get it then. Mm. Yeah, I will have to. The brunch breakdown stadium tour. I need that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, sorry about that little side note. I just <laughs> noticed. That. I was like, damn, that's nice. I like that. All right. Uh, best thing I drank. Uh, Josh Sellers is my favorite. Uh, it's my favorite wine that I can get anywhere. But they have this bourbon barrel Cabernet that is so freaking good and. Dude, I'm not the biggest red wine guy, but this is everything to me. And the other reason I wanted to put this on here is because you can get this in whatever city you're in. You might not be able to get it at every single place, but you can get it. And I, I want everybody, if you like red wine, to get this because you won't want to drink another red in your life. So shouts to Josh Wine Cellars. Get your brunchy, Josh. RIP to your dad. Shout out, Josh. Shout out, Josh. Shout, Shout out, Josh. Um, like it. so I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction here and just go with the genre of non-alcoholic beers. Cause I really mm. got into that this past year and I, I like, man, I, I know I've mentioned this a million times on the podcast, but like the more I've been drinking non-alcoholic then when I go to a regular beer, like the way I see it just tank my sleep, it's it's unbelievable, man. Like it, it totally, my sleep quality, the amount of times I wake up throughout the night, how tired I feel the next day, like everybody's different in terms of your sensitivity to alcohol. And I think I found that like, I'm actually very sensitive to that. Um, and so non-alcoholics have been great because, uh, I mean, obviously you get to still enjoy a lot of the taste it doesn't taste the same, but it tastes very similar. Uh, and then also in like social settings, it allows you to, I mean, have something in your hand where you're not just like the, the dude drinking a water in the corner, you know, like you don't want to be, that's just, you feel removed from the, <laughs> the, the situation when, when you're that guy. Um, so yeah, I'm giving a brunchy out to all the breweries that are putting out some non-alcoholic brews. I've enjoyed it very much. And I think uh, it's only my consumption is only going to go up of those in 2024. I like that. That's cool. I thought, I didn't know if you were going to give two categories. I didn't know if you were going to give two brunchies because non-alcoholic Ooh. and alcoholic. I didn't know where you were going. So. The other, the other option was uh, late to the party uh, this year, but that deuce juicy I had at Lambeau Field, I I time traveled on that thing and it was unbelievable. <laughs> so like that was like deuce juicy. It was good and the story was like that. I was thinking about going with that, but yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> this was a big year for non-alcoholic everything. Like there were non-alcoholic boots. There were non-alcoholic boots at Coachella this year, and apparently, like every music festival, there's non-alcoholic whole. I mean, like everywhere was non-alcoholic. So big year. 
and shouts to anybody yeah. who you know yeah shouts to alcoholic beers because and like out and just like wine and everything anyways like shouts to it all because yeah you're right so much of our social settings have to do with alcohol <laughs> and like <laughs> i guess it's like how do we get there i don't know why but it's good that we have alternatives yeah. All right. Well, we have two categories left, gentlemen. We've got our, and we'll go with our meme of the year. Meme of the year. And guys, I just, I, I just saw this one the other day and it made me laugh super hard. And so I now have to use this if I, oh man, I didn't have this out. Oh, there it is. Boom. Got it. Brunchy for meme of the year goes to this one that I saw that said concert math is buying tickets in 2023 for 2024 so when it's time for the show it's basically free <laughs> yeah. and that is how i'm living my life <laughs> right now <laughs> accurate accurate very true it's a great one that's a great one um for me it was it was one that when it first started making the rounds i was like are you serious is this actually going to become a popular meme and it took off probably became one of the more popular ones for anybody the entire uh, year um kevin james king of queens in that hands in the pocket kind of shrugging the shoulders you know from the early days of king of queens just the photo there and that kind of kevin james look on his face i mean used in a thousand a thousand and one different ways but somehow that Innocent little photo turned into one of the biggest memes of the year. So I had to give it to my guy there. <laughs> that's really I almost good. went with that one too. I almost <laughs> did. Yeah, that's a really good one. Um, <clears throat> the one I chose uh, was, it, it wasn't like one specific, this is the meme, fill in your comment. But it was just generally speaking throughout the year, um, if somebody was dressed ridiculous, they got paired with King Charles and all the shit he was wearing at that thing. <laughs> and it was always funny to me. I, it was always, and like, we've talked on this podcast, like we're not totally all in with a lot of the trends and fashion that are happening. <laughs> like some people just look ridiculous and uh, not, you, Dan, not you, Dan, not you, Dan, not you, Dan. No, absolutely not. Um, but like, it just felt good when like, you know. Apparently Jenkos are back and then we put it next to King Charles and it's just like, Hey, hey how about in the both of you? Just like, you look ridiculous. I, I, <laughs> I had fun with that one. Oh yeah. So, those are awesome. Those are awesome. Totally. I like forgot like, cause those exploded after uh, he became King and then it was just hot. I love those. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> well, last one, fellas, it's the biggest prize of the night. The person of the year who you would also want to have brunch with. And the brunchy goes to Chris. Uh, that would be Katie Lynn Gates uh, for birthing a human this year. And uh, <laughs> I would love to. I can't wait to go to brunch with her. Um, last time we tried to go to brunch, we got a call from daycare that we had to come pick up a sick kid. So it didn't work <laughs> out very well. But we're going to try again. We're going to try again in 2024 and see if we can make it happen. But uh, yeah, when your wife gives birth, strong person of the year credentials. That's fair. Back to back to winner for you. Back to back winner in that category yeah. for you. That's right. I mean, it's yeah. not going to be, we're not going to, it's not going to be back to back to back. I promise you that much. I was going to say, I mean, you, yeah, the, the brunch thing you're going to try, but uh, yeah, she won't re win for the same reasons next year. No three Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Chris and Katie are out of the college football playoff. Just like George. <laughs> <We're laughs> op They're out. Opting out. Opting out. Thank you, but no thanks. Dan and the brunchy for person of the year he would most likely want to have brunch with goes to I'm giving it to I'm giving it to a guy that we've talked about on this podcast for a number of years okay and this year was a huge year <laughs> I think Chris I think you think you know who I'm gonna say it's not if it's okay just go ahead and then I'll say who I think it's it is I'm not giving it to Joey Chestnut. Okay, that's I'm what not I giving it to Joey <laughs> Chestnut. For Dan, sure. Dan, I'll be honest with you. Although I what thought, I was saying lines up with that. So. I thought you were going to name him for Sports Story of the Year, Athlete of the Year, Team of the Year. Like I really <laughs> thought that was going to happen this year. So just thank a clean you. sweep. 
<laughs> just a clean sweep for Joey <laughs> Chestnut. I easily could have given it to him. Uh, imagine gen- brunch with Joey Chestnut. I mean, I love that. That's the caveat <laughs> for this category, right? Um, but I'm giving it to a guy who, again, we've talked about on this podcast for a couple of years, and he just had a, 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 a tremendous, a tremendous year uh in the world of music and one of his songs came out and it just absolutely blew up and it it, it created this a whole new scene for him and i'm very very happy for him and i think he'd be an amazing person to have brunch with so congratulations teddy swims mm. you are winning my brunchy for person of the year a great a great year for him a lot of great nominees in here i thought about uh obviously time person of the year taylor swift uh would have been a winner if you know travis kelsey wasn't around uh you know who else i considered uh Brittany mahomes that's the wife of patrick mahomes who's now like best friends with taylor swift i need to hear that story are you kidding me all of a sudden now she's like close with tay tay what a life what a brunch that would be but nay Teddy swims. Congratulations, my man. Dude, okay. You know, after watching the quarterback show, people who got a bad rap before the quarterback show, Brittany Mahomes and Kirk Cousins, they both came out of that show as winners to me. Because Patrick True. Mahomes is like a freaking <laughs> stick in the mud. Like, that guy has no personality whatsoever. His <laughs> his wife is just like, hey, let's go take a picture. Like, this will be fun. And he's like, no. Nah, I don't want to. Uh, like, He's dude, boring. Brady True. Mahomes, good hang. Um, yeah, she'd probably be you know take, take a couple take a couple of mimosas. You know she'd loosen up a little bit, get yeah. away from Patrick. It'd be a good time. Be a good time. Maybe next year. All right. Well, my person of the year that I mo- that I want to have brunch with. This was tough because there's two people that I really want to give this to, but I'm sticking. I'm going with my gut. Dr. Michael J. Hyman, my vasectomy doctor in <laughs> Wait Sherman a minute. Oaks. 100% the person of the year that I would like to have brunch with because I just want to pay for his brunch. Because I tell you, life is so freeing. Life is so nice knowing that I can't have any more. <laughs> and he did that for me. And it even makes me emotional talking about it. Like shouts to my person of the year, Dr. Michael J. Hyman. <laughs> Come get your brunchy, sir. What what a name for that. That's, that's not real. That's not real. It can't be real. One hundred percent real. Woo. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Oh boy. I'm gonna be thinking about that name for a long time. Okay. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. I mean, he's like, yeah, hey, I'm in. I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. What what else am I gonna do with this yeah, name? Just uh-huh. lean into it. <laughs> lean in. It's like once you find out what that is, you're like, oh, I have one choice. Huh. That's all I got. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. Wow. First of the year. Okay. Congrats. You just you Congrats, just don't Tom. know the feeling until you just don't know until it happens. It's freeing. It's beautiful. <laughs> Brunch is on me, Congrats. Dr. Hyman. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that wow. is the brunchies, ladies and gentlemen. Great. It. It's another year, boys. Year in everything. My goodness. This has been an awesome year. I love doing this podcast. All the scheduling things that we've been having to do, <laughs> hurdles around and all the things, but we still make it happen and I'm happy that we do it and I'm happy that people enjoy it. You know, that's what I, I love and I'm I'm very happy about it. Any final thoughts on the brunchies and then going into 2024? Um, As we go into 2024, Didi, this is... This is your your last year in your 30s, correct? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. That's just that's just I mean, I I think 
before you enter that next generation of your life, I would love to share some mind blowing pasta with you too. Like sit down at a table, tear it up, eat it, tear it, tear up, it up, eat, eat it. it up. <laughs> I think it's a great goal. I think, I think we can arrange goal. to make that happen. We can arrange to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, 2024 could be a big year for the brunch breakdown. 2023 was right. We we talked about a lot of the, uh, the numbers, the new listeners that we got, a lot of the growth that we have. Uh, you know, over 173 episodes now. Uh, sincerely appreciate everybody who does listen and does share. You know, uh, as this podcast grows, it's it's a lot about organic growth and stuff like that too. So we appreciate those of you who share this with others. Um, but 2024 could be huge for us. We've got a proposed, uh, stadium tour. Uh, we have potentially, uh, Guy Fieri festival, uh, flavor town festival, Columbus, Ohio, uh, first weekend of June guys. I mean, a lot going on here, Vegas. We've got a couple of Vegas ideas. Like I'm dressed for it already, you know? So everybody buckle up and stay tuned. We ain't going nowhere. And that's the brunch breakdown. We're out.